Hello everybody, how are we all doing? I hope we're all doing brilliantly. Welcome once again to this, a brand new tutorial series right here on YouTube. Uh, in this tutorial series, what we're going to do is we're going to take a deep dive into Flutter and give a complete, that's correct, a complete uh, Flutter tutorial for beginners and advanced people alike. Now, I'm sure that you guys know that with most courses, what they do is they give you the first couple videos for free, you know, get you interested. And then just as you feel like, oh, you started learning, you're getting on your way, bam, they say, okay, paywall, you can't get the rest. Well, we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to start at the very, very beginning and make you a complete Flutter developer by the end of this course. And all of this will be available on YouTube absolutely for free. You don't have to pay a single cent. I'm going to be your instructor. My name is Ovidius Mazuro, and let us jump straight in. So for this very first video, what I want to do is I want to talk a tiny bit about Flutter, Dart, and what they are, why you should be interested, and so on and so forth. This is the main website, flutter.dev. Uh, I'm not actually going to show how to install it because I think there are already a lot of very, very good videos out there, which will show you all the different steps. Um, and on top of that, I actually use a Linux system. And I think most of you guys probably use either Windows or Mac OS, and I don't have access to either one of those. So if I show you how I install it, it's not going to be the same. If you guys have thought about why Flutter, the main reason one big thing that gets a lot of people interested is the fact that you can build fully cross-platform apps. You know, you can do your iOS, you can do your um, your Android, desktop and web, all from the same source code, exactly the same source code. You don't have to change anything at all. Uh, and that's really amazing. Uh, it's the really the first time when this has been uh, really possible. And I know some of you might be hearing this and say, hey, uh, Avidius, but what about React Native? We could make Android and iOS on React Native. And while this is true, React Native didn't allow you to make the web apps and the desktop apps uh, from the same source code. And although there was React JS, which was very, very similar to React Native, they weren't identical. And on top of that, the performance of React Native is really quite, I mean, <laughs> The, the people over at Facebook put a lot of work into it, so I don't want to say anything bad about it. But the performance leaves a lot to be desired. Um, a Flutter, on the other hand, gives you snappy performance as if it was actually native code. You're not going to see any drop in performance. Um, so I really think it is by far the best choice. And I think that in the future, it's going to be definitely the number one framework for doing anything, any kind of coding. Um, but we're not quite there yet. For now, it's still a fairly new uh, framework. There aren't that many uh, that many jobs in it or things like that, but there will be in the future, so don't worry about that. Um, so that's it for Flutter. It's very performance. It's really easy to work, uh, to work in. Uh, for anybody that has worked in React Native, uh, Flutter is just smoother. You just things just work a lot better. Um, you know, with React Native, I often felt that I had a tool which was not the right tool for the job, and I was trying to twist it to work in the way I wanted it to work. But it always felt like I was trying to put um, a square into a round hole. You know, it didn't quite fit. Whereas Flutter feels like it's made to do this properly. It's not... Uh, it's not some kind of side effect of what it was really made for. But enough about that. I want to talk really quickly about the history of Dart, which is the programming language Flutter is made in. Because uh, at the end of the day, Flutter is the framework uh, and it's built upon the language Dart. And you can see that the websites flutter.dev and dart.dev are actually really, really similar. Dart.dev just looks like the dark theme version of Flutter.dev. So straight away, you should uh, you should think to yourself, well, these two are related, <laughs> like really related, a lot more than uh, React Native and JavaScript. Um, and yeah, they are. Uh, so Dart and Flutter are both made by Google. Essentially, when Dart was made, it was supposed to be the new JavaScript. For anybody that has worked in JavaScript, especially on the web, you'll know that JavaScript it has some strange things. 
uh, oftentimes it doesn't do exactly what you'd expect it to do and it's just there were just some things off about it and so um, I think it was in 2009 Google decided to improve on that to make a better JavaScript so they made Dart and you know it was great except for one small thing Google owned Dart and all the other companies, Microsoft, and Mozilla and Apple, uh, you know, all these people who made the browsers looked at Google and said, well, we're not going to adopt your, your new language. You can't just come in here and tell us what to do. You can't give us a new spec. You can't just say everybody's using this instead of JavaScript because JavaScript is something which uh, all the different companies and even open source people can control to a certain extent. Um, and so Mozilla, Microsoft, and Apple didn't want to give give up control, so they refused to adopt Dart. So what ended up happening was uh, the previous versions of Google Chrome was bundled with a JavaScript interpreter as well as a Dart interpreter, but none of the other browsers were. Um, and anybody who's done any uh, web development already knows what it's like trying to code for, uh, for Internet Explorer because they're a bit late to adopt even simple things, CSS or uh, ES6 or things like that. And it can be so frustrating when not every single browser acts in the same way. Well, with Dart, there was only one browser acting in a, in a certain way. So as you can imagine, uh, people like us developers were not able to use Dart, which is really a shame because it's a great programming language, but we couldn't really do anything with it because if we made anything in Dart, it was only for Dart. It was only for, for Chrome users. It wasn't for Firefox or Safari or uh, Internet Explorer or so on. Um, so as a result, Dart didn't really take off. Uh, it's there were a couple people using it, but nothing was really happening uh, until a few years ago. I believe it was 2015, 2017, I don't remember the exact year, when Google decided to launch Dart 2.0. Uh, so Dart 1.0 was more similar to JavaScript, whereas 2.0 takes a lot of ideas from object-oriented programming, things like Java, uh, C hash, uh, C++, this kind of thing. And in doing so, Google also made Flutter. Now, the reason these two work so well together was because, as I mentioned, Dart was pretty much not used uh, at that point. Of course, there were a couple people. There's always a few people who like some kind of obscure technology, but by and large, people were not using Dart. So when Google decided they wanted to make Flutter, they had this language which, which was like JavaScript, but better, and they had complete control over it. Nobody else was using it, so they didn't have to worry about backwards compatibility or anything like that. So they just completely changed it. Dart 1.0 and 2.0 are two completely different languages. They <laughs> they don't resemble each other at all. Um, and that's how Dart 2.0 was born. And that led us to Flutter. What makes Flutter different than the other frameworks that came before it is right here. So um, the way that Google had salvaged Dart when nobody else was using it, even before Flutter was released, was they decided to make a Dart compiler, which took the Dart code and compiled it into JavaScript code so that therefore developers like you and I could use Dart and make it into JavaScript so that it could work on any other browser, any other platform. And when that was done, Mozilla, Firefox, sorry, Mozilla, uh, Internet Explorer, and Apple, they all loved the idea and they, you know, it went over quite well. Google was able to hold on to their language, which they put a lot of time and effort into, and make it into something which could be used by many people in any browser. And once they had this idea of having that compiler, they thought, well, why are we compiling it just into JavaScript? Why don't we compile it into, for example, to Swift, so we can run it on iOS devices? Why don't we compile our source code from Dart into, for example, Java or Kotlin, so we can run on Android devices? Uh, the embedded MPI is just the JavaScript one. So this is the exact reason why uh, Flutter is so much more performance than any other framework because it's actually been compiled into the native code. So when myself as a consumer, if I download a Flutter app, 
I don't even know that it's a Flutter app unless the developer you know, tells me because it's going to feel just like a native app. The source code is going to be native code. This is one of the downsides to all of the other uh, cross-platform frameworks like Shamarin or React Native and so on. They use JavaScript because JavaScript is a language which all mobile operating systems need to be able to recognize because that's what's on web pages. And obviously you want your mobile device to be able to access the web. But JavaScript is not made for your mobile device. In fact, JavaScript is kind of not made for anything. It's just ac accidental. Uh, that's why everybody's still using it uh, because it's the only language on the web but nobody really wants to use it. So there's that. Anyway, guys, so that was it for this brief history lesson, looking at Flutter, what it is, its relationship to Dart. And once again, so Flutter is the framework, Dart is the programming language. You know, I always hear people mixing these two up, saying that Flutter is the language. It isn't, Dart is the language. But Flutter is pretty much the only thing which matters in Dart currently. There's also Angular Dart, but it's not really, uh, it's not nearly as popular as Flutter is. Okay, guys, so make sure you tune in next time. Next time, we're going to look at some basics of Dart, how to write our very first program. We'll look at the print statements, uh, different variables, variable types, and so on and so forth. It is going to be an absolutely breathtaking lesson. You will learn so much and you will be very, very glad you tuned in. But in the meantime, make sure you hit that like button, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, and I will see you all next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.